Hello, good morning. Um, we are going to be starting the next chapter today. So it's going to be electricity and magnetism. Um, I've attached your new notes to um, the email you got this link from. So we should be good to go. Um, today's lecture is going to be a little longer than the rest of them for the next couple weeks because this is where I'm getting your basic information. Okay, so this chapter is going to be over electricity and a little bit of magnetism at the end. Um, let's get started. Electricity. What is electricity? Electricity is the energy associated with electrical charges, both positive and negative. The energy associated with electrical charges. So we've already talked about energy and the force that goes with that. Now we're going to look at how we use that force of energy. There are going to be two charges. One of them is positive, one of them is negative. This is the basis of how electricity works. The positive, or the pluses, they come from the center of an atom, um, the protons. So if you look at an atom in the center, uh, and this may go back all the way to middle school, you have the neutrons and the protons. And they're all in this little nucleus in the center, right? Those neutrons have no charge. They're neutral, right? Your positive protons make that inner part positive. Then around the outside of where those, that nucleus is your negative charge. This comes from the outside of the atom, and these are your electrons. So protons are positive, electrons are negative. The basis of how electricity and magnets work go on this rule. Like charges repel and opposite charges attract. You've probably heard this, this part at least, in just like everyday language, because we use that a lot, but it comes from this. So let's look here. This is a positive and a positive. They are going to repel or move away from each other. A negative and negative, they're gonna do the same thing. They're going to move away from each other. But if you have a positive and a negative, it's going to attract, bring together. Uh, if you think about this with magnets is the easiest way. When you have two ends that are the same, they don't want to touch, right? But if you flip one of them, they'll squish together real fast. That's the attract part. Some things can carry this charge and some things cannot. A conductor carries electricity. These are things like metals, water, you, you are a conductor. <laughs> That's why you get shocked if you ever grabbed a metal fence, like an electric fence, and it says you're a conductor. You're mostly water anyway. Uh, and some things are called insulators. These are things that do not carry electricity. Uh, rubber, plastics, wood. You'll never find a wooden electrical fence. That doesn't make any sense. Um, this is why if you're a... Um, line worker, um, you work on like power lines and stuff, uh, they wear rubber boots because those are insulators, meaning you won't, we'll talk about completing the circuit, but so you won't get electrocuted. <laughs> uh, now we're going to talk about, um, we'll start with static electricity and move on to how that goes into electricity we use in like uh, lights and things like that. Static electricity. Static electricity shows how electric charges are transferred between objects. So it's going to show us how these transfer, how these charges, excuse me, move between one object and the other. There are three ways it's going to move. Three ways. The first is friction. Now we know the word friction. We talked about that at the beginning of the school year. Um, it's when things touch, right? Rub against each other. So friction is, is just that. It's when something rubs against each other and passes on that electricity. Um, like if you've, like a little kid at a party, if you take your balloon and rub it on your hair and it sticks out, that's friction. You're rubbing it, right? Another is contact, touching something that has a charge. So this thing right here, um, you may have seen these on TV or you may have seen them in a museum. Uh, if you touch it, it makes your hair do that. That's because this thing has built up static electricity in it. When you touch it, it transfers to you and causes this to happen. The last one is induction. Uh, we talked a little about induction heating and thermal. Induction means not touching. So in static electricity, this may have happened to you if you've gotten close to something metal in your house and you haven't touched it yet, but you get shocked a little bit. 
that is going to be induction. It's transfer without touching. So why does that happen? Why do we get shocked? It's because of static discharge. Same things that make this. Um, static discharge is a pathway that makes electricity move suddenly. Uh, if you go back to here, especially this one, you can even see it there. When you get close enough to this object, it's going to want to take that negative and bzz, get rid of it. That's your static discharge. Um, it's the same way lightning happens. There's a built up of positive and negative energy up in the clouds, and then it bzz, discharges down to the ground. Um, this video, you can actually look this up. It's really interesting. It's a man got hit by lightning seven times. He's actually been hit by that. Uh, he'll say more than that. Um, he has the Guinness World Record, I believe, for how many times he's been hit by lightning. Uh, it's very interesting. In your lab this week, we're doing the e-lab. Um, you don't have to watch this, but if you do, uh, it has to do with this. So this is going to be your e-lab. This is John Travolta. That's why we have the grease thing, right? Um, this is called John Travoltage. Let me escape. Let me get to it so you can see what it looks like. Okay. Um, it is a FET simulation. This is going to be one of the things you do this week. Um, you're going to create static electricity. And it will either by contact or induction. It's way up here. All right. So there is a lab that goes with this. It is in module 20. Um, wow. Uh, it is in module 20. Uh, pretty simple. Not a hard lab. Okay. Oh, I told you there's going to be a lot more notes today. <laughs> uh, let's go on to section two. Um, so now that we kind of know what electricity is, or at least the basic of how electricity is made, uh, we'll talk about how we use it a little bit. So section two is called the war of currents. It is not an actual war. Like there's nobody like killing each other on a battlefield. Um, it is a fight between different types of electrical currents. So the basics, there's two types of electrical current. A current is continuous flow of electrical charge. It's what produces light and electricity. It's why you have to plug things in, right? You complete that current. There's AC and there's DC. AC stands for alternating current, which means the direction of the flow switches back and forth. So the electricity doesn't just go, it actually constantly switches back and forth. DC is direct current. That's when the flow stays in just one direction, uh, meaning it goes from point A to point B. In the early 1900s, late 1800s more, um, you have this battle. Uh, if I go back to my first slide, no, go back, go back, go back. So my first slide, it's called the War of Currents because there's actually two people warring or competing um, to have their type of electricity be the main one that Americans use. Um, you have Thomas Edison, and here you have Nikola Tesla. Yes, Nikola Tesla, the same guy that the Tesla car is named after. That's that's why, which will make sense because that's an electric car. Uh, I'm going to go through both sides of this and show you like kind of how it went down. So on the AC side, the alternating current side, you have these two men, um, Nikola Tesla and George Westinghouse. Um, George Westinghouse is the big guy on here. He's an inventor, a very famous inventor, not as famous as Tesla will come, but very famous. And he's also an investor. He's very rich. Like you can kind of tell he's dressed, pretty rich guy. Um, he puts all of his money and fame into this guy's idea. He's Nikola Tesla is very young. He is foreign and he, no one really knows who he is. Um, he turns out to be one of the smartest people, um, the most intelligent people uh, that come out of this era. Like that's the reason the Tesla cars are named after him because he did so much very crazy things we didn't really think could happen. 
Um, so that's the AC side. You have this young guy who really doesn't know what's, he doesn't have any fame behind him. You have this guy who has a lot of fame. Here's the pros and cons of AC. Um, as an American at this point, you have to pick, or they're telling you you have to pick. They're trying to figure out if you want to use AC or DC in your homes because they're companies. They want you to spend their money, your money at, with them, right? So you as an American at this point would have to pick and you'd have to weigh the pros and cons. So here are the pros and cons of AC. The pros, they're cheaper. Um, it's very cheap. Actually, Nikola Tesla wanted it to be free. Wouldn't that be nice? Um, it also travels over long distances. Um, this ends up being built at the end. This is the Niagara Falls Power Company in 1895. Uh, it produced enough power to essentially have all of New York powered. That's a lot. Um, here are the cons, though. Uh, no one really knows about it, and no one knows the guy that invented it. Nobody knows this guy. <laughs> uh, it's just some random inventor, um, and it's very powerful. At this point, we don't have a lot of safety in our electricity. Um, you just have wires just going through your house. And there's a lot of propaganda. Propaganda um, is when you use information or sometimes false information or at least biased information to make people think one way. You'll see a lot in war um, when we have propaganda photos like using Mickey Mouse to push World War II. Um, these things. Uh, this is uh, an electric chair. It's actually the first electric chair. It is important to know that AC was what made this electric chair. Uh, because Tesla didn't build this. His competitor did. Edison, which we'll talk about in a second, his competitor made it. So the AC looked so scary that you didn't want it in your house. As a consumer, as a buyer, right, you look down and go, oh, I don't want that in my house. It's going to kill my kids. No, no, I don't want that. Sells his side, right? Uh, this is also one they actually electrocuted an elephant um, on what's called Coney Island using AC, again, to make it look really scary so you didn't want it in your house. This is the guy who did these two things. You know him, Thomas Edison, the father of the light bulb, right? Probably the most famous thing he's done. He also... Um, was the big person that founded DC or direct current. He is a very famous inventor at this point. He's like the um, Chris Hemsworth of inventing. Everybody knows him. Everyone's seen all the stuff he's done. Is really cool. He's really cool. Um, pretty much anything he makes, you're like, oh, I want to buy that. Very different from Tesla, right? But he actually has the type of energy that's not as exciting. Um, pros. The biggest pro is that he'd already started putting this into homes. So people had heard Thomas Edison has this form. We don't have to use lights. We don't have to use candles anymore. People are like, yeah, rich people, only rich people, because it was very expensive, um, would be like, yeah, let's go. I want that. So he'd already started putting it in housing. And it came from a very famous name, a household name. Here are the cons of DC. It didn't travel very far, and it was very costly. Only the rich, 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 rich people could afford this. We're talking about like the Rockefellers and the Vanderbilts and the people in your history class that own everything. That's who had it. Um, this is his Pearl Street power station. Uh, it only produced enough power for like, I think it's like five city blocks. Yep. Think of all the problems with that. What if we had to have one of those every five blocks, a whole power station? That sounds horrible, right? So it ended up um, they compete and produce energy enough for the World's Fair. It is actually AC current that gets this. This is the Chicago World's Fair in 1893. It was when we lit up the city. Um, this is the first time most people had ever seen electricity. And you can see they kind of overdid it. To, to show it off, right? Um, AC ends up getting this. And AC ends up being what most of our power comes from. But really, um, we don't know who won. Uh, studies now 
in this war of currents. Studies now say a lot of people are going back to DC power instead of AC, although AC is more powerful um, and less costly. DC is very reliable. So certain um, companies are going to look into DC to save some money and produce very interesting electricity. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. That was a long one today. I understand that. <laughs> um, this week, you have your assignments. You have your notes, which is in section one and section two. I promise the rest of the notes will not be this long. We just did half the PowerPoint today. <laughs> um, if you have any questions or anything, please email me. Okay. Have a great week, guys. Bye.